Hello, welcome to Life with Toya. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back, friends. All right, so we are all about conquering financial goals with a touch of budget-friendly magic over here. And today we'll be doing cash stuffing, but um, I gotta tell you guys a little something first. If you have been watching my channel, you are aware that I did not get paid on Tuesday like I'm like I normally am I actually got paid on Wednesday and when I got paid on Wednesday I had an event Wednesday night um so I already spent money <laughs> okay then I was supposed to film Thursday but I had to get I had to spend some more money so we're gonna see how this cash stuffing works this may be a this is why you should cash stuff before you start spending money um, episode, <laughs> which is okay because life happens and we learn to adjust. So I have my international coffee house coffee, iced coffee here. And we're gonna hop into it. I also wanted to do something else a little different. This may not be the best episode for it, but hey, we're gonna try it anyway. I want to do tribe talks so if you hit that button that says subscribe that will get you to be a part of the tribe all right and if you are a part of the tribe you are my people if you watch it from outside the tribe you are still a friend to the tribe but we just want you to be one of our people so go ahead and hit that button that says subscribe okay thank you thank you now um i do want to have like some topic topic talks while i'm doing cash stuffing because there are some things that I have been learning about budgeting and this community that I never knew. And I just kind of wanted to bring some of them to light. So I think this will be a great opportunity to do so. All right. So first, yeah, that's one of my receipts where I spent some money. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. And here's another receipt where I spent some money um or that was my deposit so we actually were supposed to withdraw um 254 dollars 254 dollars and I'm positive 100 positive this is not 254 dollars so let's see how much we have Two, four, six, eight, one, twenty, forty, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred, one hundred, one, twenty, thirty, four. This is a hundred and seventy nine dollars. Um, of course, I didn't have my cash breakdown with me when I spent money, so I'm hoping that I put the right thing in the right place um and it already looks like i didn't but okay so the money that i spent was i already stuffed the 50 dollars into cash so let's say 254 we're gonna minus the 50 dollars because i've already taken that that was 204 and i spent 25 dollars in gas so that's the 179 dollars so we're gonna keep that in mind. At least I kept up with it. Because <laughs> if you don't keep up with it, girl, guys, what were we doing? All right. So, this is the 254, and this is where it's supposed to go, and this was what we were supposed to spend. The one. And I already did transfer the 134 to my sinking funds and the 37 to savings. And we're gonna color our savings charts. Okay, so <clears throat> the topic that I wanna talk about today is low income. And that's a very touchy subject for some. Um, <clears throat> so, which is, I just want to just dive into that topic because it affects many of us. 
but I don't want to just be talking numbers and government assistance eligibility. Instead, I want to focus on the very real feelings and challenges that many people face when we're watching these types of budgeting videos on YouTube or if you're seeing things like on Instagram or TikTok. And it kind of makes you wonder, am I not doing enough, right? So the first category we're going to stuff is gas. And I already spent $25. Okay, this is the part where it's going to be confusing because, okay, that's not going to be too bad because I was supposed to put $30 in there and I've already spent $25, so I only need to put $5 in there. That shouldn't be too bad. Where is my, okay, there's my good pen. So, um, for the for the longest, I thought that low income was like, if you qualify for governmental assistance, such as food stamps or Section 8 or um, TANA for whatever governmental assistance programs, if you qualify for them, then you were considered low income. Governmental housing, anything like that, you would be considered low income. Um, I don't remember, what is today? Okay, today, we're doing this kind of late, so I'm gonna actually put the actual date. It's the 9th. And some people actually uh, don't qualify for those things, but they would consider themselves low income. I do remember a time when there was, um, I would bring home 600 and fifty dollars every two weeks i was a single mom so i had another human being that i was responsible for i had a rent of 535 and i had um a car note of like 230 dollars don't ask me how i made it because i was not budgeting i was not cash stuffing i was probably probably using more than likely i was using um overdraft privileges as well as credit cards and loans so we stuffed gas grocery is a 96 i have not been grocery shopping yet i did not want to grocery shop until i was done with this because i knew if i grocery shopped before i was done with this then that would have me <laughs> crazy but that should have me with 25 dollars in gas yeah 25 dollars in gas um, so that's probably how I made it. And the crazy thing about it is being a single mom in Alabama, um, bringing home $650 every two weeks, you made too, I made too much money to qualify for food stamps. So I have no idea what the requirements for that is, because to me, I just feel like it's extremely excessive. Um, but they went based off my gross and having to provide family health care through your job for um, this was before they added um, a person and a, another person. So if you were a single mom, you had to sign up for family insurance, which to me was crazy because a family of four and you as a family of two could be paying the exact same amount because the person that you're supporting is not your spouse. To me, that was just bananas, but I had to do what I had to do. And because of my gross amount, <laughs> Um, I didn't qualify for anything, so I just had to make make it do what it do. So we have 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 in groceries, which we are going to be adding 96. It was supposed to be a 50, but I think I took the 50 and put the 50 in my eating out and used that. So we're just going to replace that with two 20s and a 10, and hopefully the 10 will not be an issue later on because I don't have another way to come out with another 10 or something. I don't know. So we'll see. So uh, I'm supposed to put 96, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90. Is this $6? One, two, three, four. That's not $6. Hmm. I'm supposed to have $96 in groceries. Okay, uh, this is 25, 6, 7, 8, 
Um, all right, y'all. What am I going to do? This is why I, okay, yeah, this is, that's that kind of episode. This is why you need to stuff before spending. All right, so let's put this in here and we'll come back to groceries because I don't, I don't know what we're going to do with that. Hopefully we, do we have some more money in here that we can um, exchange? Uh Girl, that's $12. That is not going to do anything. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. All right. So, moving along. Household. This one's going to be easy. Uh, $20. <laughs> Yo, I don't know. Okay. So, household gets $20. I don't know what we're going to do. But, and that one, this one was blank. So, um... So basically in the world of YouTube, you can you can find yourself kind of comparing and um, sometimes it just makes you feel like you're not measuring up financially. So we watch these videos of people with what seems like endless wealth and it's easy to start doubting our own financial journey. But let me tell you something essential. Your financial situation is unique. Everybody's financial situation is different and it is okay to be exactly where you are. It's also important to remember that low income is relative. So someone who used to bring home $120,000 a year, who now brings home $60,000 a year, they may feel like their $60,000 that they bring home is low income, but someone else may see their $60,000 a year that they bring home and wish that that was something that, um, or I wish that was their financial situation is basically what I'm trying to say. All right, we're adding 20 and that gives that 20. So, I said all of that to say that what may be low income for one person may not be low income for another person. I almost put that in the wrong envelope. <laughs> So it's also relative, even though there are like financial eligibility charts and things like that, um, someone may be not comfortable and consider that low income. We're not putting anything. Oh, yes, we are. So we're putting $20 into the fun envelope. And I think uh, so that's what we'll do. I think, I think y'all, I think I'm figuring it out. I think I know how we're going to fix this, but we're just going to see when I get to it. <sighs> so here's the secret sauce though, for real, for real. Budgeting. No matter what your, fin no matter what your financial situation is, your income level, budgeting is going to be our superpower and it's how we're going to manage what we have effectively that will help us work toward our goals, whatever they may be. And my goal for me personally is to make my money work for me instead of always having to work for my money. And if that is part of your goal and you would like to see some content that will help you towards that goal, be sure that you hit that notification bell so that you will be notified every single time that I drop a new piece of content and make sure that you hit that button that says subscribe to make sure that you are definitely a part of this tribe, okay? I love saying that, if y'all can't already tell. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put 20 in here, and that's going to give us 20 for our fun and entertainment. So budgeting is going to help us take control of our finances. I've already done dining out. So let's go ahead and do the hair. The hair is in this envelope. If you guys have this envelope and you, or this binder and you like it, kudos. Let's see. Hair. All right. So I did end up taking everything that I had in the hair and I uh, put it into the savings account um, so that I can keep it as part of this this budget here all right so the goal for this is 
I need to break a 10 up and a five and five ones. How can I do that? A five and five ones. And I can't. So I messed up the 10. That's, I told y'all, I messed up the 10. All right, so. What happens if I take 40 and put $40 into the hair? That will leave me 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to cut my grocery budget by $2, which that's fine because, you know, I have been killing it in the groceries. If you have not, I will be linking some videos in here of how I've been getting lower and lower and lower in my grocery budget. Um, I think this past time I spent like 30, less than $35. So I should be good on that. And then I'll just keep in mind that I have an extra $2 in my hair. Oh, Lord, let me put that that's not the right um that is not the right envelope okay y'all let's stay focused all right so budgeting is like a roadmap for our money and i actually watched if you guys are not watching um okay i just found her channel today uh, i'm gonna put her name right here <laughs> i think i want to say it's money and millennials or millennials and money i think it's millennials and money but she got laid off and everything was cool for her and me um actually um hanging out with my cousin who had a situation where she was still able to continue to go on about her life and it's like a sense of freedom you know so we're gonna deposit forty dollars instead of the 38 into the hair and from now on, the lesson that I learned is that I will cash stuff no matter what before I spend, okay? Because I I went and got gas. Because these are, because I'm usually on a routine, right? Usually on a routine. And when your routine gets thrown off, it's just like, girl. Um, okay, so this is the grocery. So let's write that I put $40 in there and we're going to do $92 in our groceries. So watch this. <laughs> Yo, I just really feel like once I put this in here, I'm going to see it or something. I don't know. So this is the money that we're adding. 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we're going to add $94. 9, 6, deposit. $94 plus 29 is going to get us 123 instead of our 125 which is no big deal because, like I said, I've always, I keep coming in under budget and guys i just thought of something else that i'm going to change because this is a budgeting journey this is the fourth check that i have budgeted ever in my entire life and i'm almost 40 i know better to get late in the game than to never be in the game to 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 100, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that's $123 for groceries. And that is fine. Okay. So. So basically the deal was 
Um, I just wanted to encourage and inspire you to start budgeting. No matter where you are in your financial journey, don't let anyone else's finances make you feel bad about your own. Um, because I did get caught in that trap. It did make me feel a little bad about my own uh, situation. But just don't let anyone else's financial situation or a financial journey make you feel bad about your own. Remember that what you're seeing is just one small piece of their financial puzzle. Okay. So everybody's situation is different. And that is my everyday um, thing. So now we're about to get ready to do, hold on. <laughs> Our sinking funds. I messed up because I spent the money somewhere else. I was supposed to have a 50 for grocery shopping, but. All right, so I just have this here so that I can see. Um, this one I have to fold it back because if not, it's, it's just like everything is just in the way. <laughs> Whatever. All right. So I keep these. I keep this separate from the real money because they look so much alike and I like my freedom. I'm not trying to go to jail for accidentally spending some prop money or worse. Okay, so this time I shook things up a little bit. I am going to put $8 into the DMV. This is for my car tags and registration and all of that fun stuff. Um, we need $8. So five, six, seven, eight. We're not gonna condense anything today. We're just gonna pop it in here, keep it moving. And I like doing this because it lets me see where I am. Eight dollars, thirty-two. I can't trust my math. So I have to use the calculator. <laughs> 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. That's right. And y'all see how the money is getting a little bit um, easier to deal with? Because you got to keep playing with it. But I am going to give me some quicks at one point. Come on now. So why are these ever going to open? So, <clears throat> maintenance is for car maintenance. So, it's not really much in here. Keep in mind, I just started doing this. It's going to keep building the more I put in here. Um, oh, wait. DMV. Car maintenance, we're going to put in 20. So, let me just write these in here as I put it in here. Car maintenance is 20. Two, four, six, eight. So that's gonna give me $80. This is for like oil changes, tires, or just anything um, that is needed. Y'all, <laughs> I don't know what happened with my hand right And I ran out of white out. So I'm gonna have to buy some. I gotta figure out what was gonna come out of the household. And my charger died. So now it no longer charges my phone. So now I'm gonna have to buy a charger. So I did transfer 52 kids, but I'm not gonna put that in here because I transferred it to online spending. Um, my online a spending account, and I was going to go to Target. I went to Target. I bought some things using that money. So the kids' money is no longer in the kids' money. Um, I bought some things for my daughter's baby shower with that money. And when I got in there, y'all, it's been over 20-something years since I had to shop for a baby. Okay? Over 20 years. And there's so much stuff to buy now. And I literally contemplated, okay, I'm going to go over budget. <laughs> I'm going to go over budget. But I'm not going to go over budget. I'm just going to budget her a little bit more next paycheck. 
so that I can get her what I really wanted to get her that was sold out, but I just got her or her son some things, my, my G baby, some things. All right. So travel, I do have a trip coming up. So I'm going to put $20 in that. I have a trip coming up in November. Um, so yeah. $41. So y'all, let me know what y'all think about the uh, Tribe Talk. And also, I want to start doing a Tribe Talk shout out. So um, put your um, opinions or thoughts on the matter in the comment section. And in the next Tribe Talk, we will uh, pick a random person who commented um, and we will give them a shout out on the channel during the next Tribe Talk. So I think I like that idea. All right, because I'm trying to get y'all to interact with me a little bit more. <laughs> All right, so this is Epidemic Sound. This is actually coming up. So you may wonder why it's so expensive per month because if you do the monthly Epidemic Sound, I think it's like $8, but I'm paying like 16 Because I waited so late to do this, and it's actually due October 22nd. Same with Prime. Prime, I'm paying $20 per pay period instead of, um, I want to say it's like $14 a month or something. But I'm paying $40 a month. It's because I started so late and they're due. <clears throat> so basically, I kind of want it to be done, paid for within 10 months. So... 10, so that'll be 20 paychecks. So I'll just take whatever the amount is. So like 108 divided by 20, it'll be like $5.40. So I'll probably just put $6 in there every time I get paid. And then it'll still be kind of cheaper that way. So we're about almost ready to empty this one out. So 48 plus 16, <clears throat> that is $64. So... I'm supposed to put $16 in here. So 10, 15, 16. All right. See if we got 64. So 20, 40, 50, 55, 60. One, two, three, four. Yes. Money's getting a little bit more flexible. Next, we have Prime, which this one is almost done. Uh, this one is due the 29th. So we did the Epidemic Sound, which was 16. And we're doing Prime, which is 20. That'll be easy, just pop a little 20 over there. And that'll be 80. Two, four, six, eight. And I keep both of these uh, together because this is considered like a miscellaneous bill. And I thought about another one. And every time I think about it, I say I'm going to write it down and I don't write it down. But there should be another miscellaneous bill in here. And I have no idea what it is now. But I feel like it's coming up in like January or something. Ugh, all right. When I think about it, I'm going to write it down. Uh, next one is health. Uh, I skipped health this time. Um, and that is it. So there's another for Christmas of birthdays. The emergency savings we did transfer thirty-seven dollars. That gives us two forty-nine. Is that right? I actually got two seventy-two in there. So I'm gonna have to find the other deposits and figure out why, but I actually got 272 in there. So I'm just gonna make that. Okay, so one, two, 50, 60, 72. So we have 272 in there, because basically whatever's left, um, 
we transfer it to the emergency savings because we're trying to get it built up. Because I'm trying to get to the point where, honey, if my child called me and be like, girl, you got to go. I'd be like, all right. Right now, if they say that, I'm going to be like, <laughs> all right, let me put this up. <laughs> all right, so we can color all the way up to here on the savings. Um, and while I'm coloring this, I just wanted to let you guys know that your financial success is about progress, not about perfection. Whether you're saving for a dream vacation, paying off debt, just making your ends meet, your journey is valid. You're not alone. I'm just trying to get this, uh, emergency savings fund up to a thousand dollars. Okay. That's a question that I have for y'all. Cause Dave Ramsey's baby steps recommend the savings um up to a thousand dollars and then pay off your debt and then fully fund an emergency fund so do you put the three to six months or however long you decide on top of the thousand dollars or hold on Ooh, excuse me had to sneeze so do you put the thousand dollars i mean do you put the three to six months on top of the thousand dollars or do you do that as a separate um, account? Because I was looking at doing it as a separate account because I don't think I want to um, dig in my fully funded emergency fund. Um, I mean, I don't think I want to dig. Yeah, I don't think I want to dig in a fully funded emergency fund. Because I feel like it'll throw the three to six months of expenses off like if i have in the event that something happens with my job or whatever and my car needs to be fixed i'll and i know you're supposed to rebuild it but what happens if something happens when you're in the process of rebuilding it i don't know i'm just a little confused about that do we i was thinking of doing a separate one because i really want just a regular emergency fund up to two thousand dollars because everything i went through in april in case you haven't seen any of my other videos, everything that I went through in April, it was well over a thousand dollars. All of it together was like right at two thousand. So I feel like two thousand dollars would have me in a good place. And in the event that I did have a one thousand dollar emergency fund during that time, it would have helped, but it would not have been enough um, because I just had four emergencies back to back and. Before I would have had time to build that emergency fund back up, something else would have had, had had happened or whatever. Now, in that case, I would say, okay, dig into your three to six months and then rebuild it. But I don't know. I just feel like I want them to be two separate accounts. So do you keep them as two separate accounts or do you put them together? So that is all that I have for you today. So if you haven't already, please make sure that you join our community by hitting that button that says subscribe to be a part of the tribe. Let us let us go ahead and support each other on our unique financial journeys. I love this community. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me. And remember, budgeting is for everyone. And together, we'll make our money work for us instead of always working for our money. Until next time, enjoy life with Toya.